G'day guys, Billy here from the beautiful great southern region of Western Australia. Well fellas, I'm in a beautiful oasis at the moment. If only you could see it fellas, it's absolutely a paradise. One of the most beautiful spots in my hometown in Dombiong, West Australia. And also one of the last remaining areas for the Bankshire tree in my hometown in Dombiong, West Australia. There are other areas, fellas, but this is probably one of the last big remaining populations of Bankshire trees. It's a beautiful area, fellas. Um, but we'll see all this bare land here. And it goes on for a fair way. There's big patches of bare land. All of this land was stripped of beautiful Bankshire trees and Casarina trees. Mallee trees and many other different tree species probably in the 1960s for land clearing, sheep grazing, possible cropping but um, I was speaking to the landowner the other day it's just too sandy for cropping in this area right here so it wouldn't be feasible for planting crop in this area it's just too sandy, too boggy, very very boggy especially when it gets wet but I have got permission to be out here too, fellas. So, this is a beautiful area. I have been here quite a few times before, fellas, but, you know, I was talking to my mate the other day, Dale, the organic farmer, and he gave me a really good tip that whenever you're collecting seed species, fellas, don't just collect the one seed species off one tree. Try and get it off, you know, as many trees of the same species as possible. That's a beautiful Banksia seed pod. So I'm just going to walk around this area and collect a couple of buckets of beautiful Banksia cones. And uh, yeah, so we'll try and find a few different species of Banksias guys. Be very, very careful of snakes. It's quite warm today. But just walking in this nice composty type environment making a lot of noise buckets cluttering and the leaves breaking beneath my feet the bark it's gonna scare snakes away fellas might see one but I doubt it but like I say guys if you're ever collecting seeds of any species even if you're overseas in America and so forth you know don't just grab the one seed from one tree, try and grab it from you know a variety of different trees of the same species. Same goes of native grasses and so much more. So just walking around fellas, hopefully we'll see a beautiful um, Banksia flower. So we might come across something nice guys. It's a bit of a secret location where I am right now, fellas. Not many people from my hometown would even know where I am. But, uh, yeah, just going for a walk. To... I just planted a heap of beautiful bank shears today, fellas. But the other day I came out here, I just didn't get enough seed pods or cones, bank shear cones. Oh, it's absolutely beautiful over here, fellas. So we'll just take a bit of a shortcut and I'll show you. We'll go on the other side. But this Banksia tree here, the really long, narrow stems are a different species than back there before. I'm not too sure of the species name, fellas, but... But yeah, some of these Banksia trees are ancient, guys. Hundreds and hundreds of years old. So basically this is what we call an old growth Banksia forest. Old growth. So there's not many old growth forests left in Australia, in the southern regions anyway. So it's beautiful here, one of my favourite spots, guys. This Banksia tree right here, fallen over, but it's still 
surviving. All this beautiful patch of ground right here, fellas. Like I say, completely, you know, bulldozed in the 1960s. It's just go over here, have a look at this tree, and then we'll cut across over there. Some, I know there's some beautiful Banksia flowers over there. So hopefully I can get a couple of buckets full of Banksia seeds. Fellas, I want to try and plant, you know, two or three hundred Banksia trees. I'm just looking for nice fresh seed pods. These ones have already cracked open in the hot sun and the seeds just fall out on the ground. And also these banks rely on bushfires and so forth for them to germinate. And the smoke of bushfires helps also to pollinate these banksia seeds, the trees. So it's mainly only banksia seeds I'm after today guys. So we'll go come across here. I know there's some beautiful seed pods over here. So like I say guys, I have got permission to come out here and collect some nice seeds. The farming family who owns this property is a, um, one of the pioneer farming families of my hometown. We've been here, their great grandparents have been here since probably the late 1800s. A bit windy, guys. Hopefully, you can hear me. So, I was out here the other day, fellas. I might have a good video. I haven't published it yet, but we saw heaps and heaps of beautiful wildlife eagle, eagles, a fox, even though that's not native to this area. A beautiful birds, so much more. So, that's kind of what I'm looking for, fellas. And also, a good tip for you is when you do collect these banks here seeds, always pick them if they've got some seed pods already opened up so it's a good sign they're going to be ready for picking don't pick the really the really green ones so it's a beautiful i did come across a beautiful bank shear flower here the other day so we'll see if we can find that beautiful spin effects Beautiful. That's what I'd love to get. Learn how to grow, fellas. It's beautiful spin effects. You can't really see it, but it's like a big mound of grass. And look underneath this beautiful, ancient. Got this beautiful ancient banksia tree, fellas. This will be definitely three or four hundred years old, I reckon. Notice all this beautiful leaf litter or the banksia leaves. Notice how there's hardly any weeds growing, fellas. It's just a perfect natural way of controlling the weeds. These banksia trees fall down, I mean, the leaves fall off, and hardly any leaves grow. It's that thick, this beautiful, you know, compost just keeps on going and going and going. Beautiful compost too. It smells absolutely beautiful too. So definitely fellas, some beautiful ancient banksia trees in this area. The oldest I've seen definitely around my area. Right here, I don't know if you can see it fellas, there's a little divot, a little hole where a kangaroo has been sleeping. Look at the size of that trunk. Massive fellas. Obviously nothing compared to the massive eucalypts or the American Californian redwoods, but still just a massive size Banksia. So just walking backwards fellas because that wind's blowing directly against the camera. Here.
So yeah, it's a beautiful area, don't you reckon, guys? Not affected by salinity. We've got a major salinity problem here in the Great Southern Region. And look at this. This is where a kangaroo's been sleeping right there. Or two or three kangaroos. See all the poo? I might collect some, eh, for my... I'm planting kangaroo poo at the moment. That's beautiful and fresh. It's only just been still soft. See all the stains on my fingers. So that kangaroo, as we heard me approaching, jumped off. So I'm collecting kangaroo poo at the moment, fellas. So I'm planting it, hoping that there's going to be nice nature spin effect seeds and so forth. Which there probably will be. So I'm just doing a bit of an experiment. But yeah, this is what the kangaroos do during the day. They'll scrape away all the leaves like a dog does and sleep under the beautiful shady trees and sleep all day and come out at sunset. More seed pods there for a different species. So, I just want to find one of these beautiful banksia flowers to show you guys. So I was here a few days ago and only saw one. So it's just a matter of stumbling. Oh, here it is. Just a matter of stumbling, stumbling across one, fellas. So right here, fellas, look at this beautiful banksia flower. I'll show you this one. That's a beautiful banksia flower, fellas. So that's not totally flowered, so see how it's all beautiful like a yellowy orange type down the bottom? That, that will spread all the way up the top. And these flowers sell for an absolute fortune at florists. Just one flower, I reckon you'd probably be paying about 25 bucks just for one of these flowers. So it's a huge money making potential too for commercial banksia growers. that's it guys and obviously when it all dries out those seed pods when I'm collecting this that's what this flower will look like one day probably next year be all full of beautiful Banksia seed pods so it's called a Banksia cone yep this one's full of beautiful Banksia flowers Just see that seed pod. Oh no, sorry. It's be a little cocoon or something on those leaves there. No, nah, it's just a natural thing. But yep, so that's what they look like, guys. A beautiful banksia flower, and they come in all different colours reds, yellows, oranges, pinks. And probably a few other colours I can't think of at the moment. So hopefully one day guys, that's what I'll be planting out in an area like this. Who knows, possibly even this area. In that big block of land that's just been bulldozed in the 1960s. So that's a beautiful banshee of flower. It hasn't started the actual yellowing of the flower flower still a beautiful beautiful thing and it feels like a really really soft guys um, kind of like wool like sheep's wool like the inside of your woolen jacket or something like that it feels beautiful kind of like a a woolen brush that's what they call it the bottle brush fellas for like the old bottle brush cleaners it's beautiful don't you think definitely one of the most beautiful flowers in Western Australia but there's so many other different types of beautiful flowers fellas 
They are literally everywhere, all different species, not just the banks here. But this is definitely one of the most beautiful. This is actually my state, Western Australia. So this is our actual floral emblem on the coat of arms for West Australia, the banks here. So anyway, fellas, so that's what I'm doing, just picking up beautiful Bankshire seeds. And uh, I didn't plan on making a video, but just heard some bronze winged pigeons just take off. You might have heard the flapping of the wings. So anyway, guys, I'll continue doing this. Try and get probably two buckets in a bag full of beautiful Bankshire seeds. So... I hope you enjoyed the video fellas and who knows maybe one day I might be out here planting all those trees that I'm currently just trying to grow over 3,000 trees of different species of the great southern region of West Australia because like I say fellas you know millions and millions of acres tens of millions of acres of land was cleared by the early pioneers in the 1900s and so much land has just been destroyed due to excessive land clearing. Um, and we've got a really major problem all around southern Australia for salinity. So I'll point you in the right direction for some really good videos I've made on salinity, fellas. It's really important that you watch them because, you know, there's... I've said it a million times before, I'll say it again, guys. There's only... You know, out of probably <laughs> over 10,000 rivers in southern West Australia, and I'm not talking about, you know, big rivers, some are pretty big, but, you know, little creeks and uh, big rivers, medium rivers, they've all been destroyed and they've all died. There's no more freshwater rivers in southern West Australia anymore. It's not just rivers or lakes. There's only about two or three totally freshwater rivers left in southern West Australia and uh, you know many many thousands of rivers have become basically totally dead and they've all turned to salty water and the water is so salty it's saltier than the Dead Sea over in the Mediterranean and not you know when all these rivers turn to salt fellas billions of animals died off so I'm not talking about billions have become extinct, but billions literally were died off in less than a hundred years. You know, some recovered. You know, we've yeah, I'm not talking about billions of animals became extinct. Maybe, you know, one or two hundred animals have become extinct, but literally, you know, if you can think of tens of thousands of rivers, how many how much wildlife that would uh effect then you're talking about literally billions of animals not just normal birds and all that insects frogs tadpoles you name it fellas and there's no way ever those rivers will go back to fresh water so all right guys it's not just in southern west australia it's all over the southern part of australia and obviously also affects other countries even in america salinity possibly Canada and uh, quite a few countries but Australia is definitely the worst for salinity caused by excessive land clearing deforestation and so much more all right fellas thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed the video so I've got some really good videos coming up shortly guys stay tuned and thank you so much for my new subscribers and all the comments and or the likes. Really, really appreciate it, fellas. Alright, have a beautiful day wherever you are in the world. Thanks, everyone. See ya.